Good day to everyone. Welcome. Welcome, my dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, and all who are curious to once in a while touch on the button for a certain podcast. Well, this is a very new one. I'm starting today a new podcast. in spirituality as you are a Christian or in another religion that's all fine the main thing for my broadcast is that you get the message this is Pastor Yeti I hope your day is well wherever you are in the time frame of your day and for some getting back to work after the weekend but I know also that many people work in weekends too so there will be a introduction to and maybe the first one would be a little long but I hope you bear with me so healing with forgiveness and the first one is unforgiveness for there is hope for a tree if it's cut down that it will sprout again and that the shoots of it will not cease nor fail Though its roots grow old in the earth and its stump dies in the dry soil, yet at the scent of water, the stump of the tree will flourish and bring forth sprigs and shoots like a seedling. This is a Bible verse from the Old Testament in the book of Job 14, 7 to 9. Life can cut us down. We can feel like this dry old stump in the ground with no hope of future. Just sun scorching our lumpy, dirty bark. Our hearts may thirst for something better, someone who understands us, or something to satisfy a void in our spirits. I will tell you, my friend, the only one to satisfy any of your thirst is Jesus Christ. Many Christians are broken and alone. They thirst and desire water. A cool, refreshing liquid to satisfy a moment's pleasure. A person's life can change with one encounter with Jesus we can open a heart to receive his precious spirit O God you are my God with deepest longing I will seek you my soul thirsts for you my flesh longs and signs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water Psalm 63 verse 1 A barren spirit searches. The spirit is a persistent, parched, and panting. Its relentless search will not cease until water is found. The old stump is cracked and riddled with despair. This is how our spirit may feel hungrily searching for truth. Desperate for water, our hearts will always end its quest at the feet of Jesus Christ. Water is life. Living creatures need water to survive. 
Humans may last weeks without food, but we will last only days without water. Apart from Christ, even for just a little while, our spirits will seek living water. It is how Christians survive. It is how our spirits mature. Living water offered by Christ's precious hand is a believer's lifeline. An unforgiving spirit is dehydrated and lifeless. It searches but will be confined to a withered life of arid journeys because of disobedience. Unforgiveness is the antithesis of God or antithesis. An oxymoron to God's word. Unforgiveness will dry a Christian spirit to a lifeless, desiccated stump. We can hear them coming. A loud, clanging sound, the courtships of cavern walls with ear-piercing clanks and clashes. We may even brace ourselves for who approaches, looking toward the vibrations and the intense commotion their grimace gives them away. The pouty faces, the frowned eyebrows, and the constant glamour of the ball and chain carried have left an unpleasant mark on all they meet. The feather scrapes the floor as they slog the way behind them, a reminder of the scars their hearts have endured. We see the wounds they carry, we see the everyday pain they harbor, and we think to ourselves, just let it go. The Christian refuses peace and healing, day in and day out, the same scar, the same tail, and the same wound, a painful reminder to everyone who dare ask why so unhappy? Every day, every year, and every season, the same ball and chain. We can hear it a mile away, clang, and then it happens. Our hearts reroute our lives onto a different path, one less noisily traveled by open scars and scorched, scratched by chains. Hope has prevailed. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain, where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. Hebrews 6, 19-20 Life sprouts through dead branches. The branches bear fruit and bring forth colorations, budding blossoms of joy throughout the life of the tree. It is the tree's purpose to grow and bear fruit, to bring shade, food, seasonal changes, and growth. Unknown caller. The tree flourishes with just a sense of water. Their voices are like a breath of fresh air, opening up the airways, engulfing pure oxygen throughout the body, and their voices bring comfort and hope to your heart. Christians experience pain just as unbelievers. Our hope remains in Christ Jesus who bestows upon us amazing men and women who have walked paths, our feet which we never endured, paths of heartache, pain, sadness, loss, 
oppression, depression, anger, addictions, and the list is endless. We hear their voices. We take a deep breath and open our hearts to the ones who have walked the steps we are crawling through. The slimpy pit many get sucked, backed into is overcome by the family voices that lifts a prayer and encouraging words to our spirit. We can hear the laughter, we hear the praises to God from their hearts, and we smile knowing who is coming. You may even stop what we are doing and purposely fully say hello to the family voices. Fresh air, a warm embrace, comfort from the one who understands. Yes, we know the spirit-filled Christian who have drudged trails and tribulations coming out on the other side stronger and happier. We decisively redirect our steps to greet them and offer sincere hellos. An overcomer, ball and chain cast aside for joy, happiness and truth. I believe God moves in our life unique, uniquely and individually. I love hearing testimonies of the Lord's plan in personal lives, which hardens my own. The Apostle Paul said to mutually encourage one another, for I long to see you so that I may share with you some spiritual gift to strengthen and establish you, that is, that we may be mutually encouraged and comforted by each other's fate, but yours, both yours and mine. Romans 1, 12, 11 to 12, I mean. I believe that body of Christ encourages and comforts one another. We are called into unity by the blood of Jesus Christ. Through this united spirit, we are... The to lift the brokenhearted, the downtrodden, the oppressed and sick. We are called to pray with those who are drudging through difficulties such as forgiveness. Christians are to come alongside each other and serve one another. Forgiveness is a process. Healing of unforgiveness takes time and effort. For those in the body of Christ who deserve I mean, who desire healing. The elders or priests should be praying and encouraging. My prayer is this. Lessons of healing and forgiveness will open your hearts to hidden wounds a stronghold to be released from, from a refreshment to your spirit through forgiveness you will need a persistent attitude before you start working in what comes in different lessons Seek the Lord. May he open your heart and reveal deep scars and heal what the enemy has tried to destroy. And may the Lord guide you into his truth and keep you from quitting when the journey becomes difficult. Searching through scriptures and praying to the Lord for truths develops a tenacious attitude conquering hidden wounds. You will have to make a decision 
resolution to not abandon your journey when it gets painful. You will need to intentionally seek the Lord's wisdom and emotionally deal with your past. You can absolutely heal from past hurts and struggles. Each lesson we go through ends with a confession of the word to replace ungodly thoughts. Instead of thinking in negative thoughts, replace the thought with the power of God's word. And each lesson ends with a prayer of scripture, such as a psalm or Bible verse to pray out loud. Every lesson allows a small place to write things down, your first impression. So see that you have a book with you to write it down your journal. First impression can be powerful for something may come up out of your spirit hidden or pressed deep. It is through journaling or the word associations you will be able to see your first impression is. And at the end of each lesson there is a group of words presented for you to write your first thought, emotions, or reactions. These reactions allow you to see and feel what response quickly comes to the surface of your thoughts. For example, if the word forgiveness is presented, what is the first thought that comes to your mind? Examples could be mercy, grace, a person's name, Jesus, God, love, kindness, giving, weak, or stupid. The word uh, yeah, associations allow you to deeply dig through your heart and visually write it down. People are gifted with learning and understanding information in different ways. Some are visual, some are auditory, some learn by touch, and some learn by connections. By visually reading God's word, listening to his word, connecting emotions with different words presented, and feeling the emotions you have. I believe those who take the time to dig deep will benefit from one or all of these areas. At the end of each lesson is a reminder to play a worship song as you write and journal. Drawing closer to God through hearing worship music opens your spirit to receive a strong connection. Music has a way of relaxing our spirit and clearing our minds. I believe through these confessions and exercises Christians can see and I invite those who come in. You all are welcome and journal deep-seated beliefs that may be contrary to God's word. My prayer is you take this and deviate seriously and intentionally. There are many in the body of Christ, and many out of the body of Christ in the world, who are bound and chained by deceptive spirit. Their releases need support and prayer. My heart's desire is for God's church to be made whole, united, and purposeful in their gifts and talents. I pray that these lessons offer hope through the precious hand of Jesus Christ. May God's name be praised and magnified for the good work he does. And God bless you in your journey. I'm going to stop here, and the first lesson we're going to go to is in another broadcast or a podcast, and I will start talking about the forgiven Christian, okay? So may God bless you, and I hope that a lot of you will come in and start the journey. As we start in the beginning... Let me repeat this again. For there is hope for a tree if it is cut down. 
that it will sprout again and that the shoots of it will not cease nor fail. Though its roots grow old in the earth and its stump deep in the dry soil, yet at the scent of water, the stump of the tree will flourish and bring forth sprigs and shoots like a seedling. Keep that in mind and hold it close to your heart. May God bless you as you walk in this new journey for maybe somebody is just find out this broadcast with Pastor Yadi. You're welcome. God bless you and may God touches your heart and transform and heal you. Amen. Praise the Lord. And bye.